Hey guys, this is Richie uh, coming at you with a, uh, another online Bible study video. We are in the book of John. We are in John 4, and we're going to run through John 4, verses 46 through the end of the chapter, and then um, 5 all the way down through uh, 517. So the end of 4, beginning of 5, that's where we're at. So if you will, go ahead and grab your Bibles, and take those out, turn to John 4, and then we'll go through that starting at verse 46. So this is what it says. So he came again to Cana in Galilee, where he had made the water to wine. And at, Caper and, sorry, and at Capernaum there was an official whose son was ill. When this man heard that Jesus had come from Judea to Galilee, he went to him and asked him to come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. So Jesus said to him, Unless you see signs and wonders, will you not believe? And the official said to him, Sir, come down before my child dies. Jesus said to him, Go, your son will live. The man believed the word, and Jesus spoke to him and went on his way. As he was going down, his servant met him and told him that his son was recovering. So he asked the hour that he began to get better, and he said to him, Yesterday, the seventh hour, the fever left him. The father knew that that was the hour when Jesus had said to him, Your son will live. And he made himself believe in all his household. And this was now the second sign that Jesus did when he had come from Judea to Galilee. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now here in Jerusalem at the Sheep Gate, a pool in Aramaic called Bethesda, which has five, roof colonnade, five roofed colonnades. In these lay a multitude of invalids, blind, lame, paralyzed. One man was there who had been an invalid for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there, he knew that he had already been there a long time, and he said, Do you want to be healed? The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no one to put me in the pool when the water is stirred up, and while I'm going, to, and while I'm going another steps down before me. Jesus said to him, Get up, take your bed, and walk. And at once the man was healed, and he took up his bed, and he walked. Now that day was the Sabbath, so the Jews said to the man who had been healed, It is the Sabbath. It is not lawful for you to take up your bed. But the man answered them, The man who healed me, that man said to me, Take up your bed and walk. They asked him, Who is this man who said to you, Take up your bed and walk? Now the man who had been healed did not know who it was, for Jesus had withdrawn, and there was a crowd in the place. Afterwards, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, See, you are well. Sin no more, that nothing worse may happen to you. The man went away and told the Jews that it was Jesus who had healed him. And this was why the Jews were persecuting Jesus, because he was doing things on the Sabbath. But Jesus answered them, My father is working until now, and I am working. All right, so that was the end of John 4 and the beginning of John 5. Uh, here in this passage, we've got a couple of miracles from Jesus. Um, Jesus heals the official son. Um, you know, not in a normal, typical Jesus-like fashion where he just tells the official, hey, your son is healed, go on home, everything is good. Um, and then uh, in the beginning of chapter 5 where he heals the man by the pool um, on the Sabbath, that's more of a um, typical Jesus healing where he says, you know, hey, just take up your mat, walk, go on. You know, he's actually there, he's actually present. He actually calls, calls for the man to show a little bit of faith by picking up the mat. Um, we'll get that to a little bit uh, here in just a second. Um, but I want to start off by talking about um, miracles in general. Um, you know, as 21st century Christians, we, um, we don't fully grasp and fully understand and fully appreciate um, miracles as much as we probably should. Um, we don't see miracles um, in our day and age like they did back in Bible times. Um, now, that's not to say that Jesus isn't and God uh, isn't uh, working, that they're not, you know, working in people's lives. Obviously, God is sovereign. Um, God shows providence in people's lives. Um, you know, when, when people pray, um, you know, God will choose to work in that the way he does. Um, but as far as, you know, just a person walking up to a paralytic and saying, hey, get up your mat, you know, pick up your mat and walk, or hey, hop out of your wheelchair and walk away from this. You know, we really don't see that. You know, we see people like Benny Hinn or something like that on, you know, you know, asking for money and doing crazy stuff like that. But um, you know, those are, you know, obviously proven to have been scams in the past. You know, so it's kind of hard to trust that, hard to believe that. Um, a lot of the reason why we don't see miracles in our certain day and age right now um, is if you look through. If you look through Scripture and you look through the Bible and you see when um, when miracles happen, they happen at a certain point in time. Um, when you look at um, Moses and the miracles that he performed, um, that you know that God allowed him to perform, 
um, and you look at Jesus and the miracles he did, um, and then if you look at you know some of the major prophets, uh, the miracles they did, uh, and if you look at Paul and Timothy and all them and all the miracles they did, if you look at the when they did the miracles and how they did the miracles and the reason they did those miracles, um, you can understand why um, we don't really see them as much anymore. Um, the main reason, um, there are two big reasons why um, miracles were allowed by God to be done here on this earth. Uh, and number one is because they were there to reveal God to the people. Um, when, you know, when Moses would come, um, when Moses would come um, to do miracles, um, he did those miracles to demonstrate that he had authority to demonstrate that he was uh, God's spokesman. Um, you know, when he went before Pharaoh and he did, you know, and all the plagues came down, you know, those were huge miraculous signs. Those were major things that showed that, yes, this was from God. This was from an all-powerful being that was in charge of everything. Um, it gave validity to what Moses was saying, and it. Um, basically prove that he was from God. Um, you know, when we look at the prophets, you know, they were given this awesome word to speak to the people of Israel, um, to tell them that they needed to repent, they needed to turn back to God and this kind of stuff. Well, if they would have just um, come to the people and said, you need to do this, this, and this, they would have had absolutely no authority, no validity whatsoever. Um, so through those um, miracles and signs and wonders that they did, um, that showed the Israelites and showed the people of Israel that Yes, these people were valid and that they were um, who they said they were and that they were really from God. It revealed God to them. <sighs> Excuse me. Anyway, um, so that verified their authority and that God um, granted them this ability to perform miracles. Um, getting into the New Testament, um, obviously when Jesus was doing all of these miracles, um, you know, that was the validity that he needed showing that he was the son of God. Uh, we talked about Nicodemus back in John 3. He recognized that Jesus was from God because of the signs and wonders that he was doing. Um, the first thing Nicodemus says to him is, you know, teacher, we know that you're from God because of the signs you're doing. So Jesus comes in and he's doing miracles. He's turning water to wine. He's healing people. He's helping people. Um, he's bringing people back from the dead. Um, all of these signs, all of these wonders, all these miracles that Jesus is doing is revealing that he is from God. It is a revelation of God that this miracle is happening. Um, another reason that um, miracles uh, happen are um, to show that God is still sovereign and still is still in control and um, that God's kingdom and the restoration of creation are one. Um, you know, uh, Wayne Gruden said this. He said one of the purposes of miracles was to bear witness to the fact that the kingdom of God has come and has begun to expand its beneficial results into the lives of people. Um, this is what Jesus was talking about in Matthew 12, 28, when he says, but if it is by the spirit of God that I cast out demons, then the kingdom of God has come to you. So because of Jesus' miracles, um, we knew that he was um, who he said he was and that Israel was once again coming into the midst of God. Um, if you look uh, even further and you look at Paul, um, when they come to the um, um, council, Jerusalem council in Acts 15, there's a large dispute um, of whether Gentiles need to convert to Judaism and then to uh, Christianity. There's this big thing. Well, Paul and uh, Barnabas get there and they're talking. And the whole reason that the council is listening to them is because of all the miracles that they have done. Um, Acts 15, 12 says that the assembly fell silent and listened to Barnabas and listened to Paul because they related what, uh, as they related what signs and wonders God had done through them among the Gentiles. So the miraculous word of God served as a um, served to the Jewish Christians. God was working in a unique way among the Gentiles. Um, so it's pretty big. Um, so um, the the number one and the main reason that miracles happen was for um, God to reveal Himself in a certain way. Um, the reason that Jesus did miracles, the reason that Jesus healed um, this official son and healed this man who was paralyzed was so he could reveal himself as the son of God. And through that revelation and through the miracles, um, they would become to believe that he was in fact the son of God who he said he was. Um, so, you know, so miracles, um, you know, obviously there's a lot of miracles um, throughout the gospels. 
Um, and then past that, you know, a lot of Jesus did a lot of miracles, a lot of signs, a lot of wonders. So it's um, it's very important for us to understand, you know, what is going on in the miracles and all that stuff. All right. So um, so John four uh, forty six. Um, he comes back to Cana. This is where he turned the water into the wine. Now, remember, if you follow his plot, he was in Galilee, which is in the southern part of the um, Israel um, area. Um, and for he was down in Judea. Um, he went up to um, he went up through Samaria, up to the northern part of that, and then now he's coming back down into Galilee, uh, which is uh, where Cana is. Um, he's at Capernaum, and an official comes, um, and he. And the, this official hears that Jesus is in town, and he's obviously heard the signs and wonders. He's heard about um, Jesus' miracles. He knows that Jesus can heal his son. So he goes to him, and he says, um, um, The man heard Jesus come from Judea to Galilee. He went and asked him to come and heal his son because he was at the point of death. And Jesus said to him, Unless you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. So um, Jesus is kind of testing this dude's faith. Just right there, he says, hey, look, unless you see me do this miracle, you're not going to believe in me. You know, he's basically saying, hey, if I turn you away and I say, no, I'm not going to help you, then you're not going to believe in me. Um, and, he, and, and the official, you know, he is desperate um, because his son's about to die. Um, you know, Brooke and I have lost a child. Um, you know, we were desperate at that point. Uh, we would have done anything to save our child. Um, so this father is completely desperate to save his son. He begs Jesus to come with him. And Jesus says, go, your son will live. So the man believed Jesus. He took the faith that Jesus was um, being honest. Um, and on the way home, a servant meets him and says, your son is well. He is recovering. Um, he asked the time. And of course, um, it's the time that Jesus said that your son would be healed. So um, through this, um, he comes to believe that Jesus is the Christ. Um, his whole household comes to believe this. Um, and I'm sure they went on to um, to be um, uh, followers of Christ throughout this. Um, so this it says on here, this is the second sign that Jesus did when he was in Cana. Obviously, the first one was water and the wine. Um, but still, throughout the whole region, he had been doing miracles. So his um, the reputation had um, started to build there. Um, so after this, there was the Feast of the Jews. is on the Sabbath day. And they head down to the pool um, of Bethesda. Um, this, is, this is a... Um, interesting um, little tidbit here. This is an interesting little story here of this, this paralyzed man. He is at this pool. And basically, this pool, the pool of Bethesda, this was a famous pool um, back in the day. And basically what the lore of it was, what the story of it was, was that once a day around high noon, the angel of the Lord would pass through and stir up the water in the pool and the first person who would get in the pool after that water would stir, after that water had been stirred, would be healed of whatever ailment they had. Um, so that's what's going on here. So, so you go to this pool, and there are just people all around it who need to be healed from various um, afflictions. You know, there are some that are paralyzed. There are some probably that have leprosy. Um, some that are sick. Um, a lot of stuff going on. So Jesus goes down. Um, there's a multitude of invalids is what it says. That's, you know, a multitude of invalids. So just a lot of people um, who need to be healed. Blind people, lame people, paralyzed people. Well, there's this one man who's been an invalid for 38 years. So this man um, has just been in bad shape pretty much, probably his whole life. Jesus sees him laying there and he, he knows he's been a long time. I see he says, do you want to be healed? Hey, think about that question. Jesus says, do you want to be healed? You know, I'm sure the guy probably looked at him like, well, what do you think? What do you think? Do I want to be healed? Of course I want to be healed. Um, and the sick man said, sir, I had no one to put me down in the pool when the water's being stirred. Um, so while I'm going down, someone gets there before me. So so, so this man, he's an invalid. Um, he's like, you know, hey, there's no way I can get down there. I have nobody to put me in. Uh, by the time I get down in there, um, there's already been somebody in there. Um, I have no chance. I've got no choice. i got no way to get down there. I've got no hope. Um, so here's Jesus, and he says, get up. Take up your bed and walk. Um, and at once the man was healed and he took up his bed, took up his mat and walked. So here's this man. He's, he, he has not been able to walk his entire life, 38 years. Um, he can't get to the water to be healed um, when the angel passes through. And here Jesus comes and says, do you want to be healed? Well, if so, just pick up your mat and go on. Um, it's just this, it's just this an amazing thing. Um, you know, this, there, there's a step of faith required um, when Jesus tells this man to get up and take up his mat and walk. Um, you know, if he's paralyzed and he's been there for 38 years of not being able to walk and Jesus says, get up, 
you know, the man probably looking like, what are you talking? I can't get up. I'm paralyzed. I, I, my legs do not work. Um, yet the man stood up and at once he was healed. He took up his bed and walked. So, so that's, that's one of the miracles. That's, that's the second miracle on this list. Um, and obviously it's a, it's a great story of Jesus healing them. Um, but then when you read a little further, you see that the Jews don't like this, which this is amazing. Um, but basically what happened was it was the Sabbath day. And if you read through the, um, the original Torah of Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, um, and you read especially Leviticus and Deuteronomy, you'll read all of the laws that God gave the Israelites when they were um, in the wilderness. Um, and a lot of these laws revolve around the Sabbath day and what you could do on the Sabbath day and what you couldn't do on the Sabbath day. So God said the Sabbath day is a day of rest. You can do absolutely no work. So it is not lawful for this man to pick up his bed and carry it. This is how legalistic these Jews have become um, trying to adhere to this law. Um, they say, you cannot, um, it is unlawful for you to carry your bed. So he said to them, you know, the guy who healed me told me to pick up my bed. He healed me, I'm going to pick up my bed. Um, so they're like, you know, who is this Who is this man? And he can't find him because there's a crowd. Um, so then later on down through, he sees Jesus in the temple. And Jesus says, well, see that you are well. Sin no more so that nothing worse may happen to you. Uh, you know, Jesus gives him the whole sin no more spiel. Um, so the man went away and he told the Jews, told the Pharisees, the leaders, um, that it was Jesus um, who healed them. So this is probably something, you know, this is probably one of the first time they heard the name Jesus. Um, they're starting to kind of pick up on um, Jesus and Jesus healing people. Um, and now, um, you know, here, this is the first instance, first recorded instance at least, of Jesus healing someone um, on the Sabbath day. So that, for them... Um, you know, even though he is healing people and healing people in the name of God, um, to them, it is a heresy that he is actually healing, actually doing something, doing some form of work on the Sabbath and let alone telling someone to pick up their mat and walk um, to actually, you know, he, in their mind, he is telling them to sin. Um, you know, even though it is Jesus who is saying, hey, you're healed. Oh, and go and sin no more. Um, you know, so, um, you, know, G, you know, they come at him and they're, you know, talking about him being on the Sabbath, and he says, you know, my father's working up until now, um, and now, and I am working. Um, so, you know, Jesus basically says, you know, hey, look, I'm, I'm going to heal people, and I'm going to spread the name, I'm going to spread the kingdom of God, you know, no matter what you do. Um, so, obviously, there's a lot going on there with, um, you know, miracles and why miracles exist, why miracles happen uh, throughout Scripture. Um, you know, obviously, um, you know, to reveal God's power, to reveal who Jesus was, to show that he actually was the Christ, he was the Son of God, um, and then um, obviously um, going through, and, and you can start to see the heart of the Jews, the heart of the Pharisees. Um, you know that they are legalistic, um, that they really don't care for the people; they care just about the law and following the law. So, so that is that. Um, basically, uh, next week or next video, we're going to go um, through John five eighteen. Um, through 29. So it's, so it's a short, um, it's a short um, number of verses, but there's a lot going on there that we'll get into. So, so there you go. Until then, uh, until next time, uh, God bless you, uh, and I hope you guys enjoy the Bible study. Thank you. God bless.